So police say the shooter's car actually came down Berkshire towards Admiral when they opened fire on a car that was parked right here. But the mayhem didn't stop there. As you can see, bullets actually entered this store. John, distance to the island, not the only factor in this drowning. I'm standing right next to the shore here. When I put this stick in the water, you can see that the depth of this water is already at about two feet deep. Many people would agree that the new Blue Cross Blue Shield building greatly enhances the city skyline. And for $14 million, it should. But is that price tag the reason that your rates are going up? John, the big talk here today at the State House, the budget for next year. Many politicians wondering if this 400 page document will be the boat that gets the ocean state through the storm. Now, as you can see, this is still a very active scene. Providence police are asking anybody with any information to please give them a call at their tip line. In Providence, Tim Martin, ABC 6 News. That's right, John. This whole thing could have been avoided. Police say the boys were swimming out to that island off in the distance when they look back and realize that one of them was no longer with them. One of the reasons this trap has been illegal for so many years is it poses a serious danger to animals. As you can see, it blends in with its surroundings, like this tree here, and it also puts a significant amount of force on the animal maiming it. The residents of Providence's tent city packed their things, boarded a rowboat, and set off down the Providence River in the hopes of finding a new place to live. We have to move, obviously, from this site. The DOT has given us uh, an unofficial deadline of August 3rd. The reason? The Rhode Island DOT plans to tear down the bridge the tent city is located under next year. We realize that there are no solutions to this problem, so we've you know, scouted different areas. Now, residents of the tent city planned on making the move to Collier Point Park, but as you can see, that plan poses some problems. We came down here, we found this location, and again, we were under the impression it was a state park. But the park isn't, so when police saw the residents moving in, they had to ask them to leave. Neither case is private private. Uh, it's not city or state. We're going to take the time we need. At this point, we probably will have to break down because we don't want the officers who have supported us so much to be put in harm's way. Since Collier Park isn't an option, the tent city residents will pack up and move out overnight. They'll head back to their original site with the knowledge that time is running out on that location as well. They're at the back door knocking, and we realize this has to come down. In Providence, Tim Martin, ABC 6 News. Feel bad, like in my soul. Family and friends are trying to come to terms with the death of 19 year old Manuel Hilario, who was shot and killed at a local gas station. They said they shot him on the head and he died in instantly. So we really don't know what really happened. Police say the shooter's car actually came down Berkshire towards Admiral when they opened fire on a car that was parked right here. But the mayhem didn't stop there. As you can see, bullets actually entered this store. The store's surveillance video catching the incident on tape. While you can't see the car being hit with any bullets, you can see the cashier and customers ducking for cover. So the people just came, uh, you know, in the car. They just start shooting in the car. Very nice neighborhood. Since I opened the store, everybody welcomed me. But it's unfortunate when these things happen. A family friend who asked not to be identified tells ABC6 News that Hilario had a bright future. I feel bad because you're not supposed to die like that, you know? So I hope that they get the people, they get people go in the jail, whatever they gotta do. Now the investigation is still ongoing and Providence police are asking anybody with any information to please give them a call. In Providence, Tim Martin, ABC6 News. A warm summer day turns tragic as a local teenager drowns in the waters off Attleboro. But officials say the whole thing could have been avoided. You're not allowed to swim at all in this water. It's Attleboro uh, public drinking water. There's no swimming of any kind. The incident took place in the Manchester Reservoir, which supplies the entire town of Attleboro its drinking water. Police say they believe the boys were swimming to a nearby island when they looked back and realized that one of their friends was no longer with them. They were such a nice day today, and everybody's, you know, wants to get cooled off, but it's not a proper area to come and, and do that. Rescue crews from around the area first responded to the call around 5.30 Saturday night. Attleboro firefighters first to arrive on the scene didn't even take time to put on the proper diving gear to try and locate the victim. Instead, rushed right into action. They uh, donned, each donned like a life vest that was uh, nearby, but not specific, uh, you know, dive gear. 
Fire crews weren't the only ones on scene trying to help. A local teen in the area witnessed the whole thing and tried to aid in the rescue. He came to get us, but then after that we were all just trying to swim down to see if we could find him, and we went as far as we could, and this is just really deep. Officials say they do their part to police the area, but cannot be in all places at all times. They hope that today's incident serves as a message to others. The reservoir is off limits. Word got out that other people were to come up here, they would know that there's consequences if we come down here and, you know, hopefully we can hold off another tragedy. Now, Attleboro rescue crews found that teen's body shortly after 7 p.m. tonight. Next of kin has been notified, but police are refusing to release a name or age at this time. You know, teenagers, it's a warm day. They try to find some relief and uh, it ends up tragic. In Attleboro, Tim Martin, ABC 6 News. Pop. That's it. Residents of Providence's Elmwood section describe how the sound of gunfire shattered their quiet Saturday morning. I heard a couple of bangs and I was in my living room and I looked out the window and saw two girls get out of the car and, you know, holding their abdomen. The shooting took place shortly before 10 o'clock on Ontario Street. Upon hearing the gunshots and seeing the victims, residents like Sue Matra went into action. I saw them start to bleed and I knew that you know, I needed to call 911 immediately. Matra was instrumental in getting the girls help, but it was actually her neighbor that witnessed the entire thing. She said that there was an argument and she looked out the window and she saw the girls going after some guy that was in a car and then he got out of the car with a gun. Providence and state police both responding to the shooting as well as another location in connection on Whittier Avenue. Investigators believe the shooting to be gang related and they do have a suspect in mind, but have yet to make an official arrest. One thing's for certain, residents left visibly uneasy by the incident. It's crazy that these things are happening. It's sad, it's sad, it has to stop. I think we need better police presence in the neighborhood. Now the victims have been taken to Rhode Island Hospital. There is no word on either of their conditions at this moment, but we will bring you the very latest as it becomes available. In Providence, Tim Martin, ABC 6 News. They're a tough team to beat, and the cars outside say it all. Providence and state police teaming up to make Providence a safer place. So our goal is simple, and that's to help Providence reduce crime in this great city. Um, to hit the streets hard, but with civility and tolerance and respect. The program, the neighborhood response team, the places they're targeting, areas known for gang violence. Once they see this detail out there, this initiative, uh, regardless of what they want to call it, and I say they, I mean the gangbangers. They see the troopers and the Providence police working together. It sends a resounding message through the city. Now, you won't know it because they'll be in plain clothes, but both state and Providence PD will be walking these very streets in an attempt to stomp out violence. Those plain clothes officers, relatively new, only in use for a second year of a five-year program. So what type of impact have they had? I can tell you that the task force took three guns off the street just this week that they're making arrests every night. Attempting to bring down the crime rate of Providence isn't the only upside to the program. Funding made possible through stimulus money means that the federal government is picking up the tab, not the city. And we think this is well-used money. You know, there's the expression, the bang for the buck. But this is their buck and our bang. So, just what is next for the program? As new ideas come to the table, if they make sense, we do it. So, stay tuned. In Providence, Tim Martin, ABC 6 News. Last night's heavy rains.